Supporting this channel, helping me raise awareness of emotional abuse. Um, it could be the channel, uh, YouTube channel, or it could be the emotional abuse blog. Uh, either way, cool. Thank you very much. Do email me. Keep the contacts uh, and comments going. Um, very interesting one today. Had uh, about shame. Somebody requested that I could do a video on shame. Um, uh, excellent. Um, Excellent because that's uh, at the heart of all um, victims, uh, I'd assert. So, um, uh, why that's such a good subject is uh, because uh, to have the, and I've talked about uh, it in many videos, this uh, abuser and victim um, roles, uh, and to take the victim role, um, you, you need to be uh, susceptible to that uh, feeling of, of shame or guilt. Um, it's perfect because uh, the abuser role will pile it on and use that as a hook, uh, a, a, a hook to get you, uh, to, to manipulate you, to, to get you to do the things that they want to do, to have control over you, to, to make you feel bad. Because nobody can actually make you feel bad. Uh, I've done it before, I haven't got it around here. Um, a remote control, you know, as a metaphor. Nobody can actually program you to make you feel bad. Yet you have been programmed. Um, we're all conditioned. Uh, as we grow up in so many different ways, I call it like osmosis, you don't realise, it's not when you're taught or told things, it's everything you witness and see. Um, and in childhood, if we've been in an env environment that is uh, emotionally abusive, that's what we've learnt, uh, either to become abusive or, or, or a victim. Or there is a middle ground where you can uh, survive it and, and, and become yeah, well balanced with good self-esteem uh, that's a good place to be um, however if you have taken on this victim mentality what if you've learned through that osmosis process uh, is how to feel responsible for other people's doing and not realizing obviously that it's manipulation so um, shame and guilt perfect examples of what uh, goes on for a victim, but also what the uh, abuser will use as hook, I'm fishing, that's me, clearly fishing, uh, will use to get you in order to make you feel like you've done something wrong. Uh, and the shame could be from anything, you know, something that happened and you felt bad about it yourself, but somebody else made you feel bad about it, made you like you did something wrong and you started to believe that it was you. I'm talking about this in childhood, you know, and it's just grown and grown and grown and been compounded and compounded and compounded and bounded and bounded so that you believe that you've done something wrong. And when somebody acts in a certain way, you believe that they've made you feel that way. I mean, this is common sense, and sorry, I don't need to preach to the converted, but shame is so important for that victim uh, in order to be able to be abused. Uh, if you continue to feel that shame, um, then you'll continue to be in that pattern. Once you let go of it and realise and rise above it and know that it's not you, you did nothing wrong, you did nothing wrong. It's just that conditioning. Once you realise that, then you can break out of the pattern. So shame is there all the time. Uh, sexual, something, uh, sexual abuse that, that happened. You, you can feel the shame of not being able to tell anybody because perhaps it was a family member, usually is. Or somebody, you know, whatever it was, terrible things happen. And the shame, the guilt uh, can be, you know, you take it on yourself uh, and you think that you can't tell anyone and you, you, you must have done something wrong to make this happen. But maybe arguments in the family, things are going on, people blame you so much and so easily that you think it must be you. Um, so, you, so you try harder as a victim, you try harder, you work harder to, to put what you've done wrong right, even though you don't really know what it is that's wrong. Um, could be being hit, um, somebody else taking their anger out on you, they're physically hit and, and you believe that you've done something wrong. Why would you not? Because you're being punished for it. Um, p people can do terrible things, you know, they can... They can uh, yeah, I mean, physically they can sh sh shout, threaten, and in later life, I see later life, as we you know, grow from, from adolescence, from children, um, you know, it, it can be tri triggered so easily by somebody that's abusive. So, you know, the classic thing in a relationship is somebody can be threatening to you all the time and you think, oh my gosh, I must have done something wrong. And that, that's where the, 
the walking on eggshells uh, comes in so much. You know, you have to tiptoe around them to make sure that you don't anger them because then it'll be, oh, what have I done? How did I do that? I don't know. And you get so lost and it's, it's confused. And But it's not you. I'm going like that. It's, it's so, oh, it's not you. It's just we've been conditioned that way. It's them. And they're using that as manipulation against you. Um, because you're perfect for them, for an abuser, if you're still like that, because um, they can just point the finger at you. Joking. The face, you'll know the face, you know, in a relationship or a parent. When they've got that face on, you're walking on eggshells, but something triggers it. Don't you look at me. Oh, it could be horrid. Um, it could be a fist, you know, thrown in your face. Yeah, you f I don't want some. Who would act like that? Uh, if I was acting like that, you know, walking down the street, having a nice chat with you, you'd think that was pretty odd. Don't you dare look at me. Ugh, horrible stuff. Um, it can be all sorts of things. Uh, it can be, you know, just things that might be off the cuffs of one person, but to, to, or to somebody else from the outside. But, uh, you know, oh, you're so stupid. Why did you do that? Oh, don't worry, you've done it again. And, oh, flipping heck. Why do you do, why are you so stupid? I mean, it's horrible stuff. I mean, you, you might have a learning condition. You know, you, you might have struggled at school academically, so I started to think. I mean, I was tested for dyslexia when I was... No, they didn't have dyslexia when I was... I'm that old. Um, I was tested when I was 12 because I, I had a reading age, they found out, men in white coats with pens, that I had a reading age of a, a seven and a half year old, which is a big difference when you're that age. Um, of course, they call it dyslexia now, uh, and, and my sister, bless her, um, uh, God rest her soul. Um, oof. Um, she she did des you know, you know, trained in, in testing for that and she confirmed that I was dyslexic. Um, that's all it was. Uh, but you know, it had a stigma at that time. It's like men in white coats telling me that I, you know, I thought there must be something wrong. You know, there's something wrong up here. Um, I was also believed I was ugly. You know, can you imagine that? A man as beautiful as me um, that was. <laughs> anyway, you know, these things, we wear them like chip on the shoulders sometimes, but we believe in them, the negative stuff that gets in your head, you know. The stories I hear about people being sexually assaulted, sexually abused, uh, one lady up to the age of six sexually, you know, she's got jaw issues now that she needs surgery because of, you know, oh. Um, anyway, um, shame, guilt, you know, it's all there for a victim. They hold on to it, they believe it's them. But it's not, you know, and I can help you see that and let go of that. Um, I'll attach a lot of humour to that to help you see and lift it. But it's not you, you did nothing wrong, you know. Uh, you really didn't. It's just this negative belief. And I'll put in a separate video um, about some um, different resources about, about really starting to recognise uh, what the beliefs are. Because they're just voices in your head. Um, and they're from you, but you've been taught them from somebody else. Um, so, you know, you, you might continue to hear those voices because you're so used to it, you're so conditioned to it. Uh, and that's what you need to work out and work through and work over. Um, and I can help with that. That's, uh, that's the, the struggle and the challenge. Uh, and that's the lifeline as well, because you can get out of that. Uh, I feel like I'm rabbiting, going really quickly because there's lots to pack into a short video um, like that. Uh, so thank you for the suggestion on uh, shame. You know, something happened or it's just a gentle conditioning all over time. There's nothing gentle about it either, nothing nice about it. You know, um, people that have high self-esteem, they're conditioned time over time over time that they can do it. They are amazing, they are handsome and pretty and wonderful and great and creative and clever and, you know, all these wonderful things. You, know, you can do it, you can do it. Um, yet so many people have missed out on that, that wonderful positive um, programming. Um, so we just have to do it later on in life, that's cool. Uh, I say later on in life, more and more people with the internet are, are getting there sooner. And that's a wonderful thing. Uh, responded back to somebody today saying, you know, they're only 20 or as old as 20 uh, to some of you. Um, but that's great, you know, I discovered this stuff much later in life. Uh, but at 20, to realise this and then reprogram yourself, wow, that opens up a whole new vista for you. That's exciting stuff. So um, that's enough from me. Uh, thank you very much. Please help share and raise the awareness uh, of emotional abuse. Um, this really isn't very effective. It just stays in one little box. So please spread it, share it, get it out there um, and uh, continue to help other people. Thank you. She says don't let go Never give up, it's such a wonderful life Don't 
let go. Never give 